Land of the Brolder People by Percy Trezise. This saga, Journey of the Great Lake, is dedicated to my colleague of many years, Aboriginal author and artist Vic Rousey. It is also dedicated to all my Aboriginal friends who led me through their temples of dream time, passing on the legends and stories of their race memory, which records their history back through the countless millennia, recalling the dramatic, humid and arid weather phases of the Ice Age. The saga is set circa 30,000 years ago to encompass the extinct megafauna of marsupials, reptiles and birds, the giants of dream time, which shared this ancient land with the people of those times. Introduction Aboriginal oral history tells of hundreds of dream roads crisscrossing the Australian continent, which were made by ancestral beings during their travels at the beginning of dream time. It also tells of a vast freshwater lake at the top of Australia, and stories about ancestors like the Antimula sisters. There is also scientific evidence to suggest that 36,000 years ago, there was a large freshwater lake at the top of Australia. Scientists called it the Lake of Carpentaria, and it was also known as Balanorga, the big water. This is the story of three children and their journey around Balanorga, along the dream road of the Antimula sisters to find their way home. Wongabel told her people about how the Katamakara children rescued her from the snake men. Wongabel's parents said the children must rest with them for many days to eat well and build up strength to continue their long journey home. Jadianta was pleased to be able to let his sister Lande and little brother Jalmore have a rest as they still had a long journey ahead. They had followed the stars of the Antimula sisters as they travelled down the shore of the great lake Balanorga. Jadianta knew they were walking around the bottom end of the lake and would soon be walking up the other side. On that side, they would be following the dream road of Guriala, the rainbow serpent. They now came into the land of the Brolga people. The Brolga people lived on the edge of a great swamp where Punja grew. Punja was a swamp reed with a small yam on its roots. The oily, rich punja was one of the main foods of the Brolga people, and they spent a lot of their time digging it up. They washed it clean in water and pounded it. They then made it into small cakes, which were cooked by raking the hot ashes of a fire over them. Large flocks of Brolgas lived by the same swamp. The birds used their large bills to dig out the punja, which was also their main food supply. And, like the people, the Brolgas also danced under the light of the full moon. The plentiful, easily gathered food supply gave the people a lot of spare time to play sport. They had foot races and spear and boomerang, th boomerang throwing contests and ball games. But the Katamakara children could not stay long with Wongabel and her family. They knew that if they kept travelling, they would find their way back to the land of the Katamakara. After passing through the land of the Brolga people, they came to the land of the Baramundi people. Jadianta pointed out the huge red sandstone mountain called Narabulagan, which had been made by Guriala, the rainbow serpent, as he travelled north in dream time in the beginning. At that time, the earth was flat and dark, and there were no living things on earth. Guriala used his great jaws to push up the earth and make mountains, hills and rivers. When the earth was flat, there was one huge dark mountain. The ancestral men and women came down from the stars. They gathered together at the foot of the great mountain to decide on a way to make the earth habitable for people. Guriala joined the meeting and swallowed two young men. Guriala knew the people would be angry about the two young men, so he crawled away and went to sleep on the top of the mountain. The people tracked Guriala and sent two good climbers, the Goanna brothers, to go up and rescue the two boys. The Goanna brothers found Guriala sleeping on the top of the mountain. He was snoring. They used their stone knives to cut Guriala open. When the two boys emerged from Guriala's stomach, they had changed into birds, rainbow lorikeets. The Goanna brothers told them to fly down quickly and warned the people to run away because Guriala would do something terrible when he woke up. Guriala did wake up, 
and the thunder on the mountain so terrified the people that they tried to hide in the ground and they became all the plant species. Others tried to hide in water and still others grew wings and flew away. They changed into every living species on earth. Jadianta told the others of Guriella's story as they worked to walk towards Narabulligan. A full moon was rising behind it. Jadianta said they would see many more places made by Guriella as they travelled toward home. The children camped by a stream made by Guriella. Jadianta took his spear and went hunting, and Lunde decided to look around for edible plants. Jadianta returned from hunting just in time to spear a huge Wanambi snake that was about to swallow Jalmor. Lande ran up with Laska and helped Jadianta kill the huge snake. Early in the evening, Lande noticed that they had not only had the light from a full moon, but a large comet was coming up from the south. Jadianta said it was probably Guriala coming to light their way home if they wished to travel at night. Jadianta, Lande and Jalmor have overcome many dangers on their journey home to the land of the Katamakara people. They have now reached the land of the Baramundi people. Will they be able to continue on the dream road of Guriala, the Rainbow Serpent, and be reunited with their parents at last? Glossary Aunt Mula Sisters Two ancestral beings who travelled around Belanorga during dream time. Baba is the eldest and the youngest is Janarupa. Belanorga, the name for the Great Lake. Bella equals big, Norga equals water. Baramundi people, a clan who believe their ancestors became Baramundi. Brolga people, a clan who believe their ancestors became Brolgas. Dream Road, the path of an ancestral being during dream time. Dream time, the time of the creating of ancestral beings. Games. The Aboriginal clans played many games, including foot races, spear and boomerang throwing, and different types of ball games. Goanna Brothers Two humans who changed into tree goannas. Guriella, the rainbow serpent who created the universe. Narabulgan This is now mapped as Mount Mulligan, a sandstone plateau west of Cairns. Guriella created this plateau first, and it is here that he listened to the wind and heard the language of all the clans, including the language of his own people, who were far to the north. Panja A corm attached to swamp grass roots, and shaped like a shelled peanut, or a small yam. Rainbow Serpent See Guriella Snake Men A clan who thought their ancestors were snakes. Wanambi snake, prehistoric snakes which could be 30 centimetres, one foot thick, and 7.5 metres long. Wongabel, a girl of the Jibiru people, whose second dreaming, or totem, is the Wamira, and the two peoples are closely related. <laughs>